Hi guys, Max from Eva Resto here, and today we're going to be fitting one of our lovely premium air suspension kits on this lovely, beautiful 1964 right hand drive Ruby Red Beetle. Um, we're fitting up a 4 inch narrowed air ride beam with our own design air shocks and the relocators, and then we're going to be fitting our usual premium rear suspension kit with these air lift dual bellow bags. I'm going to show you a bit of a process of what goes into fitting something like this onto your car with no body modifications. And, um, and then in the end we should be able to show you the car working on the kit uh, with some shots up and down, raw quality, that kind, of, that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. So this is the front suspension kit. Uh, this is a pre-1966 style, so what we would refer to as like a link pin kit. Uh, but generally speaking it looks a lot like the later style kit, same shocks, similar style beam, a few different parts, stuff like that. Uh, the beam itself we've chosen for this car is a 4 inch narrow. These are also available in 2 inch narrow and stock width, so should you want to do that. Uh, the beam itself is sort of an air ride specific beam, uh, so it doesn't have any adjusters, just has these uh, set screws in the centre here. And then pre-installed are our own free roll rods. And these allow free movement of the trailing arms, so you can use something like an air shock to control the ride height and quality. Um, these are our own design Zenith air shocks and are probably a lot nicer than what you're used to. So something like this rides and handles a lot, lot better than the traditional Monroe style black air shocks that people have done for quite a while. These ones will run typically at about 35, 40 PSI and are quite a nice quality shock to drive on as well. Um, extra parts of the front kit include these shock relocator brackets, which are necessary to uh, clear the shock absorbers of the body, uh, the upper trailing arms and a few other components as well. These are a bolt-on design, um, like a three-piece part, so they bolt around the bottom trailing arms. We've got two of those, one per side. Extra parts include the steering extender here, which is necessary to move the track rods in the car a little bit further backwards to clear the air shocks. We've also got narrow track rods with a specially shaped short rod as well to clear the airbag section on full lock, either right or left, depending on what drive side it is. Um, obviously these are narrowed to whatever size you choose the beam in. And then extra parts, of course, like the grease seals and any little fittings and air fixings you might need along, along the way. And this here is our premium rear suspension kit. Uh, this would be to fit a 1958 and onward style car uh, with the angled shock towers. So anything from 1958 all the way up to Mexican Beetle spec, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's quite a simple kit. There's not many moving, well, there's no moving parts added on. Uh, it looks quite complicated because there's quite a lot of components, but generally speaking, it's probably easier to fit than the front kit and actually a lot less complicated as well. Um, main thing is these top mount halves here, which bolt on separately and then link together using this large crossbar here. These are the bags we use, which are a really nice quality dual bellow airlift bag. We also supply these airlift, sorry, these what we call free roll spring plates as well. So rather than being splined like an original plate, the torsion bar is gone, removed from the equation, and we use these instead, which these allow a really good dropped height and also don't hang up when it comes to lifting the car to a nice decent height as well. Bottom mounts are quite simple, bolt on through the axle, by, by wherever spring plates bolts on, pretty simple. Um, gas shocks are included, as are new brake lines and the clamps, and a few other little pieces, but generally speaking, this, this gives you everything you need to air equip the rear end, nothing else necess necessary at all. So of course, before we go and fit any of the new suspension stuff, we've got to take all the old gear off. Uh, so we've removed the beam and obviously all the original suspension parts. Calipers are still attached, we've just put those on the framer for safekeeping, uh, but fuel tank out as well, give us better room. Should leave you something like this for the front end. I mean, it's a pretty similar story for the rear. So we've took all the original suspension parts off. Uh, original spring plates have gone, torsion bars out. Uh, they're a little bit tricky to remove sometimes because you've got to unbolt the wing at the front here just so you can pull it free of a car. Uh, original shock absorbers, of course, gone. Um, you can also remove a Z bar if you've got one. Some later cars have them, which is like a weird anti-roll bar thing that sits up here. That's got to go. Uh, and also, Hard brake lines that go from the back of the drum to the axle as well. They could do with removing as well because we've got new ones for those. Uh, aside from that though, you should be left with something like this. This is all you need to remove um, in order to fit the new kit. 
And then some of the parts we're going to need to reuse on the front end, because of course we've only got the beam and all the suspension parts, new suspension parts, we are going to need to reuse some of the original parts. Uh, original parts being the discs or drums or whatever it is you've got. Um, you will need drop spindles, so if you haven't got drop spindles, um, you will need to buy them as part of the kit or extra. Um, the original torsion bar, well, trailing arms, you'll need these. Give these a bit of a clean paint up. Make sure they uh, aren't scarred or damaged or anything like that, because if they are, it's not particularly good for the bushings in the beam. Original steering box arrangement and pitman arm and clamp, you're going to need to reuse that. Pinch bolts for the link pins, they're a good idea to reuse. Obviously grub screws for the torsion bars as well, we're going to re need those again. And the last thing for the front is probably the steering damper, which this one looks a little bit crusty, but it's perfectly serviceable, so I'll probably just give this a paint and put it back on. And then for the rear, it's as simple as spring plate bushings. So you've got two inners and two outers. The original ones will fit the new three roll plates, no need to replace them. Uh, but if you do, if your original ones are worn, we do recommend using rubber type ones and not the urethane or delwin type. The rubber is much better, will last a lot longer and probably perform better as well. Okay, so now we're going to fit the first part, which is the beam, into the front end. Uh, we're going to use a couple of new parts here. So we're going to use new body mount rubbers. So these are the inner, inner rubbers, they're the uppers. Um, one of our skid plate kits with the extended bolts and then also new upper bolts as well. So we're fitting it with all new hardware. So we're going to stick the new body mount rubbers on there, grab one of the upper bolts and go and lift the beam into the car. A little bit awkward, but once you get it lined up, just slots in place quite nicely. And then just stick one of the upper bolts in place. And tighten that down, just to hold the thing from falling out of the car. So we've gone and got both the trailing arms on, both the upper and the lower, both snug down, ready for the next part, which is going to be fitting these shock relocators. Now these are necessary with the air suspension stuff we're using because they move the shocks on the back from its old location to a new one, um, meaning it's going to clear the trailing arms and not going to have any problems. It's also better for lift and drop and all that kind of stuff. Uh, these are a three piece design. So this is going to come apart and it's going to fit around trailing arm. Um, doesn't need any welding, nothing like that, just bolts on around it and we're going to fit those now. Okay, so I've split this down into its three pieces. This is a middle piece and this is going to go on first. So that just slots like that over the grub screw and holds in place using the locking nut there. Doesn't need tightening down all the way yet. And then secondly, the inner piece, this needs Two spacers, so two M sort of washers on that original shock mount there. And this can go on. Quite a tight fit. Might need knocking into place. I went for fitting this outer piece here. It's a little bit tight, uh, but it has to be that way so there's no slop in the design or anything once it's all up. So slip that through there, and go around the back, and should be able to knock that. Go through there as well. And then we're going to two nuts in place. When it's all tightened down, it'll pull square and there'll be no movement in it at all.
And then for, yeah, first thing to go on is these spring plates. I've uh, pre-greased these for a little, little bit of just multi-purpose grease, in and out of bushings back on. Let's fit that to the chassis. So pretty much fits as normal. Push it into place. And then refit the spring plate cover. Just snug those down fully so you don't want a gap between the spring plate cover and the shock tower at all there. Okay and with that down you can sort of see the unique shape of the spring plate here that we supply. It gives you a lot more clearance when it comes to getting the car sitting a lot lower. It's obviously a stock spring plate with bottom out on here and then you end up with not a particularly good drop type. With these drop plates here, you'll be able to get a lot more drop, drop out of it and a lot more suspension travel if you're driving it low.
Okay, so here we are. We've pretty much the finished thing now. Uh, got all the front end bolted together, all the beam in, all the arms on, shock absorbers, that kind of stuff. And now we've gone ahead and fitted the spindles as well. Steering box and all the steering arrangement and the quick steer kit. Uh, all that's gone on, looks really, really nice. We've uh, greased the beam as well. Um, and we've also greased the king pins, king and link pins even. Um, so that's all done in the front, ready for the wheels to go back on, to go on the ground and us to do the alignment. Uh, and the rear end, is pretty much the same story. So everything's sorted, brake lines are on, looking nice, everything's all piped up. Um, everything's made, you know, check for clearance and uh, made sure nothing's rubbing. Shock absorbers are on, wheels are back on in the back as well. And uh, we're pretty much ready now to put it on the floor and start setting it up properly. So here we are, 1964 Beetle, um, all fitted up with our premium air suspension kit. We've done all our checks and all the stuff you should do underneath, check the clearance in, obviously bled the brakes, and we've set the drive height up as this here, which I think looks pretty nice. Um, drive's brilliant, we've done all the road testing, so I guess it's time to show you what it looks like aired out now. So these are the pressures we've got it set at at the moment for our uh, main preset drive height. We've got 40 in the right side on the front, 75 in the rear, and then a little bit less in the passenger side, just to account for the weight of, a, of the driver. Um, if we're gonna drop that now, obviously we'll drop that down to zero PSI, and we'll have a look from the outside of the car while I do that. <laughs> 